And that's uh, products that are specifically created for people who are blind. So this is assistive technology um, that is specific to the blind, to the blind community. Um, the first thing I'm bringing up is, is a Victor Reader Stream, and this is a DAISY book player. Some of you may be familiar with it. DAISY is an acronym for Digital Audio Information System, and it's a way of formatting information that can be played back on your device. So you can play music. I mean, uh, this is typically done with text or some kind of documents. It could be audio recordings, um, and it's a way of navigating. So if you if you would just imagine going into a bookstore and buying a textbook, right, for a class. In the front of the textbook, you have a table of contents, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the table of contents, it tells you chapter 3 starts on page 96, okay? Mm -hmm. So you know where to go. Um, and all you have to do is flip through the page. So this uh, formatting allows you to flip through pages digitally or to flip through sections digitally. Digi digitally. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, I've been talking too much today. Um, so people are able to read books on here. They're able to download um, uh, Audible books, right, which is uh, books that are pre-recorded and commercial uh, books. You can also download uh, uh, recorded books from the Library of Congress Talking Books program and things of that nature. So it's, it's a really cool type of device and this is specifically created for people who are, who are blind and visually impaired. And um, What's you know, it again? This, one, this particular one is called the Victor Reader Stream. Mm -hmm. There are other devices like it. There's like uh, the popular three uh, in this category are called the Victor Reader Stream, the Book Sense, and the Bookport Plus, but there are others as well. So How much do those cost, please? Um, they average anywhere from three to five hundred dollars, depending on depending on, on the device and the when you buy it, because there's you know there's promotional periods as well. But do the Kindles yeah. talk? And you get the the Kindles have some speech technology, but they're not they're not really. Um, I would not call them accessible. It's publishers problem. Oh. It's, it is publishers, but it's also Amazon. Amazon has not really been willing to put the work into the device to make it fully uh, accessible. Like, for example, the iPad and um, Android products tend to uh, have better accessibility features, um, especially Apple for some reason. They've, I, I mean, I'm not sure why, them, why they've done this specifically, but they really have put a lot of our research and development into their assistive technology and have really ensured that people, um, and with each iteration, it keeps growing, because I, I I've had an iPhone now for about four years, and I've noticed in the accessibility section that, you know, while they, they've always had support for vision, they've added support for hearing impairment, they've added support for people with touch uh, and gross motor skill issues, uh, they've added a lot of different types of, of features, so it's really, uh, they've, they've really put a lot of time and effort into it, and, and all um, apps native to the iPhone and the iPad and, and the blah, blah, blah <laughs> are, are um, compatible with the accessibility stuff. So it's really uh, a pretty uh, impressive body of work that they've created. It's about 7.30, guys. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll, try it. I'll finish up in a few minutes. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, so this device here is a note taker. And this is another thing that's created specifically for, uh, for the blindness community. This, one, this particular one is called the Voice Sense. Um, and for those of you who can see it, it's just standard QWERTY keyboard. The buttons are a little bit smaller than, than normal or typical. Um, but this is a very sophisticated computer. And it's super, super light. I think it weighs under just about a pound. Um, and it has everything on here from a web browser to email. Uh, to, you can bring email on it, you can do web browsing, word processing, there's even an FM radio, a calendar, and a contact list. Ooh. Lots and lots of stuff. Um, and, and it talks? And it talks, yeah, it, it talks. Um, this particular one is a QWERTY keyboard one. I'm gonna switch it out for our Braille keyboard one, mm -hmm. which is significantly smaller for those of you who can see it. It's about a third the size of the QWERTY one because this one only needs enough room for the you know the basic six buttons plus a few extra feature buttons. But the the basic six keys for the Braille cell are on here, and then there's a space bar and then some other function keys. Uh, but this is basically the same device as the first one, but it's got a different interface or a different input method, right? 
Um, and these, these are really cool devices that you can take into meetings, you can take into your classrooms, but they're specifically for taking notes. Um, the last couple of things that I want to show, video magnifiers. Okay, we've talked about a lot of speech stuff, we've talked a little bit about magnification. Here are a couple of devices that actually do magnification. Actually, let me switch out so that I show you this one first. This first device is called the Aki. It's, it's cute, it's little, it's got a three and a half inch screen. It doesn't, you know, it's got, it's very bare bones, but it really is a nice little device for those who can use it. Um, and then the second one is called it's the Candy. Just, yeah, is, it, is it like a pebble? Yeah, it's exactly like the way a pebble works. A pebble is another form of video magnifier. Um, the pebble probably has a lot more features than this one. This one has only three buttons on it, but it's a really nice little, very compact, lightweight little device. Um, How much does that cost? I believe last time I checked, I think it's about 300 bucks. It's probably one of the cheapest ones on the market too. Which one, that one? Yep, the Aki. It's called what? The candy? A-U-K-E-Y, right? A-U-K-E-Y, correct. A-U-K-E-Y, mm -hmm. U-K-E-Y? That's right. Like this next one is a, as we are moving towards a high definition world, this is a high definition video magnifier. So they're even making the video mm -hmm. magnifiers with HD so you can look and see every pore on a page as you're reading your text. <laughs> um, you know, people tell me that people tell me that with these new HD TVs you can see every pimple on every yeah. new, every news anchor's <laughs> face even under their makeup uh, yeah, because there's a lot of stuff happening there. So this gives you an added level or uh, the camera is better, the screen, the display is better. Right, and obviously the price is bigger. So, but there, this is the way that the the world is moving right now. We're doing, we're going into a very high def um, or more detailed uh, view of things. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about tablets as well in the past few minutes. Um, a couple of things I just want to say. I bring this is a Nexus Seven tablet which is a Google tablet running the Android operating system. So these portable devices also have their own versions of operating systems. So there's, so we talked about before Windows and Mac OS and uh, different types of things like um, Google, uh, what about Chrome and uh, Chrome OS and stuff like that. So these products, the tablets run on what's called mobile versions of all these uh, operating systems. And a mobile operating system is typically requires less space and less energy. So it's a little bit more scaled down. The one, the uh, Nexus 7 products or a lot of, or the Galaxy phone that I showed you guys earlier, uh, run on, a, on an operating system called Android, right? So Android, uh, like Mac, has had animal uh, designations. Android has had sweets designations, right? So they've had, uh, their products have been honeycomb and ice cream sandwich and jelly bean and the current version is called Kit Kat. <laughs> and so they have operating systems? Yeah, so that's, that's how they define or how they name their operating systems. And this is, like I said, um, and, they, and this one has a screen reader built in called TalkBack, okay? And, and a, braille, uh, a braille display interface called BrailleBack. And there's also magnification and things on there. And what's um, that for? The, 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 this is a tablet. So it's a, it's a tablet. Again, the world is moving towards. Uh, you know, typically we had we've had a world where people who uh, had computers used desktop computers or laptops predominantly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But now a lot of people are moving towards using tablet type devices as their primary computers at home. Why? Because they're small, they're portable, they're lightweight. You can use them on the couch and put them on the floor or put them on the pillow next to you when you're done. You don't have to move, you don't have to sit at a desk. You don't have to put your beard down. You don't have to put your beard down, thank you. Uh, and, and so you can surf the web and you can check your email and you can do all that stuff with these devices. So what's and that's, that's the way that the world is kind of moving towards. Everything is becoming smart phone, there's even like smart TVs now that have apps, right? And they're moving, um, I read an article last week that Samsung is developing an app, a, a TV that has talking menus and talking options and, and that could be coming in the very near future. Um, what's, the I'm sorry, what's the difference between the tablet and a pad? Nothing. 
Did you just use it interchangeably? The word? Um, tablet is all what all these touchscreen devices are, mm -hmm. right? The iPad is the Apple tablet. It's just made by Apple. So right, so tablet is the generic term. Oh, okay. Right, iPad is the uh, brand, I guess. Oh, okay. For, but it's the Apple brand. So, so this is the word this pad, is called the word, Nexus. Right, when you use the word pad. You don't. You don't use the pad. With not the pad. just pad. It's called the iPad. That's oh, the, the that's iPad. the Apple tablet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like I said, a lot of these uh, tablet devices are now being used as primary uh, computing devices in the home, and and that's kind of the way we're moving. And even even as we've seen cell phones get smaller and smaller, now we're starting to see them starting to get a little bit bigger and bigger, and they're creating hybrid uh, tablet and cell phones, and they're calling them phablets. <laughs> right, so they're phone or phoning tablets because they have tab they have phones now that are about six inches big, which is pretty large. This this screen on here, on this Nexus Seven is only seven inches, so this, there's a phone that's only just an inch smaller than this. And I don't know why anybody would want to hold something that big, but rumors are that the next iPhone is going to be coming in larger sizes as well. So there's a lot of movement towards. Like, I think that my personal opinion, and you know what my personal opinion counts for, not much, um, <laughs> is, that, is that we're moving towards a more universally um, similar <laughs> experience on these, on these computing and technology devices. 